He didn't have to carry an old rugged cross up Golgotha's hill. He didn't have to allow himself to be nailed to the cross. He could have come down at any time, but he had in mind an old sick sinner like me as he held his head in the locks of his shoulders and he didn't die. The story said he gave up the ghost. So they didn't kill him. He gave it up willingly for, for me and for you. So yeah, when I cry, I'm crying, save me. Hear my humble cry. Because it's humble because I know what, what you did for me and what you've done for others. Father God, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would hear my cry. Father God, as I cry out to you this morning, Father God, asking that you would wash me white as snow, Father God. I thank you for what you are about to do, Father. I pray that you would have mercy upon your servant, Father God, as you hide me behind the cross, Father God, as you stand up in me, Father God, and speak to those, your people, Father God. Speak to our hearts, Father God. Speak to our minds this morning. Speak to our souls this morning, Father God, that your word may be heard, Father God, that when we this place, Father God, we will take you with us, Father God, out into a sin-sick world, Father God, and we may be able to open up the word of God and share what thus said the Lord to some sin-sick soul, Father God, if there be one amongst us today, Father, who do not know you in the free pardon of their sins, Father God, prick their heart that they may stand up and shout, I want to know the Lord in the free pardon of my sins. I ask that you would be with our pastor as he stands to speak, Father God. I ask that you would be with every man upon this nation, Father God, in this world who are, will stand this morning to proclaim your gospel message, Father God. Steady the mind, steady the nerve, Father God. Cast down illuminations, Father God, on the things that you have allowed them to study, Father God. Let it freely flow that we may be able to eat from your table this morning. I thank you this morning for what you are about to do, Father God. I thank you this morning for what you are about to do, Father God. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. First of all, I would like to thank all of you, my, the members of this church, because today was a day that you could have took a sick, sick, sick day. You, you, you could have, you, you could have took this day as an excused absence, Keith, because the pastor not here, and and everybody knew the pastor was not going to be here, and you showed up anyway. So I want to thank you. Now, to the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you with my whole heart for being here this morning. And then I want to thank a, a, a friend of mine that I met uh, uh, one day sitting at the barber shop, waiting my turn to, to, to get my shave. He was, he was, he was sitting in the chair, and, and as he was speaking, you know, when you get talking about the Lord now, I'm going to chime in, I don't care where we at. And then was having a conversation, and the brother was talking about he was going to be speaking on this day, and I'm sitting here listening, and we, we we were having a dialogue, Brother Mayberry, that's why we had at the barbershop. Yes, sir. Yes, and, sir. and when he got up, he gave me a track. And the track had the date and the time that he was going to be speaking. And, and I told him, man, this brother gave me a track in a barbershop. How can I not show up? All right. Amen. So I, I showed up. And the brother was, was, was talking about sanctifying our food. I've never heard somebody break down how I'm supposed to pray over what I am about to eat. And he broke it all the way down. He said, first, there's prayer. You have to be a, a, a give thanksgiving. And you have to use the word of God in your prayer when you're praying over my food. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I mean, God bless this food that we're about to say. We're about to pray six, amen. That's my prayer. Mm -hmm. And he broke it all the way down. And I'm sitting there like, Kevin, we've been praying for our food wrong. <laughs> We've been praying over. That's why he said in, 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 in talking, that's why some of us are sick. Because we're not praying correctly over that we are about to put in our temple. And, 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 and when, he, when he got done with that, after he got done, you know what he did, bro? He fed us. Show up, he's going to preach, and then he's going to feed us. And he says, all free, just make sure you be the 
on time? Because I scarred on time. All right. And then he fed us. And, and when it was over with, I said, that's a, a, a brother that whenever he speaks, if I'm available, I'm going to go listen to him speak. And I ran into him at the barbershop again. And he said, when you speak next, man, let me know. I said, you do the same for me. And he showed up. So oh, I want to thank you. But in my pastor's absence, there is a word. Okay. And it's found in, in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Yes, sir. There is a word. 2 Corinthians, chapter 12. I'm going to start at the 7th verse. Read 7 through 10. Most of us probably know this passage of Scripture by heart. If not... As soon as I began to read, it's all going to come back to me. And it reads as thus, At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, least I should be exalted above measure. For these things I besought the Lord three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproach, in necessity, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, uh -huh. then I am strong. Oh. There ends the reading of the word of God. You can take the seats. There is a story that may be familiar to some. It's a story about a little girl who found a cocoon hanging from a limb. She took it to her room, placed it in a jar, expecting to see a butterfly. One day she saw the butterfly trying to free itself from the cocoon. It was struggling and pushing its way through a little tiny opening in an effort to help uh, this poor insect. She, she carefully slid an opening in the cocoon. The butterfly was able to exit the cocoon, but something strange happened instead of Spreading two beautiful wings, the butterfly had two withered, useless, ugly wings. Why? God designed the butterfly and his cocoon so that the tight opening would, 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 would straighten and strengthen his wings. Without the pressure of the tight opening, the butterfly was robbed of its beautiful wings, and more importantly, it was robbed of its ability to soar through the air. We need the pressure of trials of life if we are to develop into uh, that that God has saved us to be. In this text, Paul tells us why he is able to soar above the heads of most other believers in his day. He tells us that it was the pain and the suffering he endured that gave him the power which God enjoyed. I want to talk this morning briefly. From, from, from this thought, blessings out of buffering. Pain and buffering, buffering and pain, they go hand in hand. A sharp stake to torment or impale someone, thorn, the, 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 to strike with a fist or, 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 or a bow, the blow, that's, that's buffering. But what it was, uh, Paul endured uh, was to him like being beaten with an open fist being impaled by a stake. It made the task of preaching and ministering to the church far more difficult for poor Brother Paul. Look, look, there, there, there is one thing we do know about poor Brother Paul, the thorn. It may have been carried out by Satan, but it was conceived by God. Keep in mind that whatever it was that, that, that afflicted Poor brother Paul, whatever Paul was going through, uh, he suffered from it. It, it. it was part of God's plan for Paul's life. 
watch this, watch this. Uh, of a Jew, five times I received 50 stripes. Uh, this is in verse, uh, uh, chapter 11, verses uh, 25. Three times was I beaten with a rod. Once was I stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. Uh, night and day I, I, I've been in the deep, he says, in journeys often, in peril, in waters, in peril, of robberies, in peril. He says, in peril in my, by my countrymen, in peril by heathens, in peril in the city, in peril in the wilderness, in peril and sea, in peril amongst false brethren. He says, in weariness, in painfulness, in watching after, in, often in hunger and thirst, in and fasting often in cold and nakedness. And this is what this is what Paul says, besides these things that uh, are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the church. But what Paul says, look at here, every time I turn around, it's something. Every city I go to, it's something. And he said, I, I go to one city and they want to rob me. I go to another city, they catch me and beat me. I go to one city, I got to sleep out in the cold. And every time I turn around, it seems like something. Something is happening. And on top of all that, on top of all that I got to go through, I'm in charge of not one church. I'm in charge of all of the churches. Oh, that's too much for one man to handle. He has to go through all of this stuff. Paul says every time I turn around, it's, it's something. He says, but, but, but I keep pushing. Yes. For, for 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 the gospel message yes. to, 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 to go forward. Yes. So, so 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 here's what Paul's saying. Every time something happens, every time I go somewhere, I have to be on the alert because I don't know how the people are, 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 are gonna take it when I get there. And most of the time when I get there and I start preaching the gospel message, now they want to do something yes. to me. So yes. why should I even go? Well, Paul was busy yes, trying to get the gospel message yes. out. And, and, and what Paul is experiencing is the fact that when you are doing what God calls you to do, when you are busy attempting to get the gospel yes. message out, you are going to run into some type of resistance. Yes. There, is, there is pain in Buffalo. Buffering and pain, they go hand in hand. Okay. A sharp wooden stake uh, to torment you, to impale you. That, 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 there's pain and there's suffering in, in trying to get the gospel message out according to what Paul is saying. Now watch this, come on now. Watch this. I'm going to be a witness, a disciple. Satan's going to cause me to suffer. Yes. And, and, and God's going to allow it. Watch what I just said. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be a disciple. Notice if I didn't say serve, I said I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be a, a disciple. Satan's going to, to, to come at me to cause me to suffer. And God's going to allow it. Watch that. Pretty much that's exactly what's going to happen. Pretty much that's exactly what's going to take place. We are going to experience thorns and buffering in life. It's, it's, it's a part of the, 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 the human experience. Job 4 and 1 says, a man that is born of a woman is a few days and in trouble. Watch this. He didn't say a grown man is going to suffer. He said a man that is born of a woman. You mean to tell me the day that I'm born, I'm going to begin to suffer. The day that I'm born, I'm going to begin to have problems. The day that I am born, I am going to have, oh my God, not the day I'm born, not the day I'm born, the day I'm born I shouldn't have a care in the world, I have a mother and a father to take care of all my needs, but, but Job says right here, uh -uh, the day you are born, you are going to begin to have trouble. When thorns pierce you, and buffering shake your foundation. You need to remember 
that nothing can touch your life that is not a part of God's plan. Watch this. Nothing can touch your life that is not according to God's plan. Job had everything. Job had children. Job had money. Job had prestige. Job was like the president of his day. Everybody looked and respected Job. But look what happened to Job. Satan goes and Satan has a conversation with God. And God says, Have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, Man, you, you got your hand on yeah, yeah. Job. Ain't nobody touch Job. God said, I'll take my hand off of Job. But what you can't do is you can't touch his life. You can't take him out. In 2000, the 
the church was still searching yes. for its purpose. Yes. And I, I asked the pastor at the church that I was going yes. to, he said, man, if they don't know their purpose by now, they lost and they'll never find yes. it. Watch this. The purpose of the church mm. is within the word of God. Yeah, yeah, right. So obviously yeah. somebody yeah. hasn't been oh. in the word of God oh. to not know what the purpose of the church actually is. Do you know people were flying their members all the way to California to sit in seminars. We were buying books and we were buying workbooks and we were having study sessions and money was being spent and somebody became filthy rich because in 2000 and some churches still didn't know their purpose. Oh, oh, how is that when the word of God tells us in, in the Bible it's in holy written what the purpose of the church is. The purpose of the church is to lift me up. The purpose of the church is to be my voice to those who don't have a voice. The purpose of the church is not to sit in here in the street. The purpose of the church is to go outside of these doors and find somebody who don't know Christ in the free part of their sin and shed some light. Life. That's right. See the thing? Right. Not what I think, but what the Word of God says that if you confess with your mouth, you see what I'm saying? You can wear the same suit I wear. If you confess with your mouth, you can work the same job I work. Oh my God, y'all bring you the purpose. The purpose. The purpose. Watch it. Watch this. There is purpose in buffering. To keep him us from being exalted above measure. To keep him us from lifting ourselves above one's place. Paul had been given many blessings in verse 1 through 6. God had, had and was using him in a mighty way in verse 7. So there was the danger that he could seek the glory from himself. So, 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 so I have to put a regulator in him and us. Watch this. I said, sometimes when, when, when we're busy doing the Lord's work, sometimes we sometimes have a tendency to not give God his just due. Watch this, watch this. Right now, uh, I, I, I love the commercial where, where the, the, they got the new car. And the young guy, the, the, his daddy gave him the keys and, and he was driving the car. And when he came home and, 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 and he said, Pops, is, is something wrong with the car? Yeah. I was on the highway. The car wouldn't go but 60 miles an hour. I had my foot all the way down on there. And his pop started to smile because his pops understood it's a regulator yeah. in the car. Do not ready to drive the car past 60 miles an hour. So I had to be to put the regulator on it so that you would be safe for you. We have a regulator. That we sometimes, that, that God sometimes has to put in us so that, that we won't think of ourselves yes. more than we ought to. It, 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 it is to remind us, Paul, that all that it, that all it's not it's all about God and not about Amen. us. The purpose of buffering, sickness, and other forms of physical suffering, sometimes enduring emotional pain, loneliness, and heartbreak. Sometimes our thorn will be spiritual in nature. We will, as we doubt our, our salvation, struggle with wholeness and, and, and battle spiritual pride. Buffering is given to us to keep us humble. Yes. Yeah. Buffering is given to us to keep us us humble. Watch this, I, me and my son, we have a conversation all the time. Uh, Lil James. Lil James, bad boy, uh, when it came to football. Lil James started at Booker T, at quarterback, at freshman year. Homecoming. They beat Miami 90 to nothing. He bad boy. And I watched a change come over him. I watched him begin to tell me 
one night what he did. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I listen uh -huh. because I know I'm finna attack him yeah. in the way yeah. that only I can. Oh, and son, you ain't did nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you a freshman. Uh -huh. I said, what did what did what did y'all talk about when you found out you had to play? He said, uh, uh, Lockett walked up to me and said, don't worry about it. I got your back. Yeah. Dante walked up to Come me on. and said, don't worry about oh, it. I got your back. Oh, the offensive line said, hey, we're going to protect you. Hey, I got your back. Right. So right. in actuality, oh. you didn't do nothing. Hey, Come on. It was folk that protected yeah. you. Yeah. 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 It's folk that looked in your eyes and knew yeah. you were scared. Oh, you know, man. I knew you were scared because you called me at 6 o'clock. The game at 7. Yeah. Well, son, what's going on? Why you calling me, Pops? I got you calling the game. I said, son, have you prayed? I've been in there three times, Pops. Mm. See, you had already prayed and asked God to protect you. Yeah. Yeah. But he did, and, and you saw a little success. Yeah. Now, oh, you see, keep now, the real
You didn't know your purpose. So you can have service. You can sing, dance, get the Holy Ghost. Watch this. You can even go outside the church. You can feed folk. You can have 10,000 ministries coming from that church. But ain't no fruit being produced. Some of us are starving. Because we, some of us still don't realize in churches what our purpose really is. It's right here in the Word of God. That's why you can have people all over the country doing purpose-driven churches when the Word of God right here says it. And, 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 and it happens often. See, we think, oh, we're doing a whole lot. Oh, there's a lot going on. Because if I did it on my own, I know I'm a fat. 
filed it up. But he sent it out for me. And it's divinely, it's divinely appointed just for me. Look, look, look. Strength is made perfect in weakness. Simply mean God gets more glory from using the weak things of the world than he does from using the greater strength and power. God gets more glory when he uses the weak things of the world. I can send 20,000 folks and slay everybody. But they're going to say it happened because of the mass number. But when I take 300, when I take 300 and send them down there to do battle for me against thousands, then not, not, not just the 300, but everybody surrounding is going to say, oh, man, couldn't have been nobody but God. Couldn't have been nobody but God. The only person that could have won that battle was God. They had us out number five to one. It couldn't have been nobody but the Lord. So, so, so that's why he does it. Yes, sir. That's why he does it. So, so that he can receive it. One writer, and I love it, one writer pins it this way. He says, may I make a, a, a counterpart saying, when Paul is strong, then he's weak. Weakness in strength, strength in weakness. Or, strong have no need of help and do not seek it. Weak knows their need and lay hold of oh, mighty strength. Oh, See, strong has no, they, 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 they have no need for any, any help because I'm strong enough to do it on my own. But when I'm weak, I know that I need to go find somebody stronger than me in order for the task to be done. And God says, if you humble yourself, I will use you accordingly. Accordingly. Come what he says. It doesn't make sense. I mean, it, it really doesn't watch. It don't make sense. It don't make sense for me. Mm. But when I am at my weakest, after the flesh, mm. I'm at my strongest spirit. Oh, oh y'all don't hear me. Oh. When I'm at my weakest, yeah. after the flesh, yeah. I'm at my strongest spirit. Yeah. Watch this. Every time, I, man, let me tell you something. I have a newfound respect for every pastor there is because watch this. When somebody like me and Marcus have to preach, everything has to fall in sequence. We don't have an office. We got the kitchen table. We got folk running around in the house. We got the phone ring, the TV on. We got some stuff going on. And you know what I always do? I always wait till 12 o'clock in the a.m. Everybody sleep. It's quiet. Yeah. Now when I get through writing, I can't even read it because I done fell asleep three times yeah. trying to get it out. I have a newfound respect for somebody whose job it is to get, get the gospel message out. You know what I'm saying? It, it seems as though I, I got this thorn in my flesh every time I get ready, every time I'm called to do something for the Lord, then I have to try to make preparations. I got to try to do this. I got to try to make But 
and difficulties, we can't rejoice. Watch this. When, when the battle is over, or when life is running along at an even keel, but when we have real trouble, rejoicing when heartache and trials come our way. See, we can thank God. We can raise our hand. We can come to church and shout. All the bills have been paid because I got paid on Friday. Ain't no ripples in the water of my life right now. I can stand up and shout oh, I can rejoice. But when I'm flat on the back of my back at the hospital, when everybody done gave up on me, when the doctor says there is no reason, when I'm sitting here listening to family members contemplating, shut everything off. Oh, can I steal? Can I, even though I can't talk, can I steal? Can I steal in my mind? Say, Lord, thank you for having me laid out like this. I needed a break from reality. I needed a break from life. But Lord, I know that you are still capable of showing up and showing up even with everybody else has wrote me off. Hey, come on now. Can we steal? Can we steal when the heartaches, the real ones come? You see, Paul was seeing beyond the thorn and beyond the buffering. He was seeing the power and the glory that was coming because of what he was facing. Watch this. He seen the power and the glory of God simply because of what he was going through. He saw beyond the pain. He saw beyond what he was going through. And he seen the glory of God through the trials and the tribulations when the storms are roaring all around you. Can you be in the storm and say, God, I rejoice because I'm in the midst of this storm. Can we do that? That's what he, that's what he said. Paul, that's what Paul said. He did. In the midst of it, when it's hard, when it's not going right, when my job is saying we're going to lay off, when my child won't come home, when my husband said he's leaving, when I'm diagnosed with a disease that, that, that they don't have a cure for, can I still say, to God be glory. You see, listen, can I still say, Lord, take the wheel? Can I still say, Lord, you in control? Amen. Can I still thank you Amen. in the midst of what I'm going through? Can I still? See, that's, 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 that's one of the problems. Watch this. Do y'all know some of the stuff that we're going through? It ain't going away. It's never going to go on. It's going to be there while we're here. It's going to be there when we go. Amen. But I have to continue to thank God in the midst of it. When he was seeing beyond the power and the glory that was coming because of what he was facing. That is why he had peace and could praise the Lord in the midst of his buffering Amen. because he could see beyond it. Yes. When we come to a place where we can see our trials from God's perspective, mm. then our whole outlook will be altered. We will stop seeing our situation, whatever they may, whatever they may be, as hard, harsh, and difficult. We will, be, we will begin to learn the truth that God is just as real. Amen. <laughs> God is just as real and just as powerful yes. in my battles of life as he is during my time of peace. Yes. We'll begin to learn that God doesn't change because my situation Amen. changes. What changes is the way I rejoice. I rejoice when times are great. I'm down when they're not. But watch this. God never changes from one situation to the next in my life. He stays even keel. I'm the one that's up and down. 
Let me explain something to y'all. We share with folk what we won't share. Say me. Say me. We share what we don't share. See what I'm saying? Yeah. How many women are willing to tell a young lady, I was promiscuous when I was your age. But look what the Lord has done for me. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Huh? Amen. Well, I've been to jail while well, I have too. Oh, yeah. Come no, on, you man. haven't been to jail. You go to church every Sunday. Come on, man. Just because I go to church don't Amen. mean I don't know what the inside of the jail looks like. Amen. But you know what? Look what God has done Amen. for me. Come on, man. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We got to be able. Amen. We got to be able. Yeah, man. 